I've played some very, very bad games in my time, some very crazy games, but this, this is as close to insanity as I've come in a long, long time. What the actual hell have I just played? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, I'm Josh Drive Hayes, and this is Worst MMO Ever, a series where I play the worst MMO games I can find, so you don't have to. Drop a like on the video or subscribe to the channel for more MMO stuff, and ring the bell so you get all the future notifications, and as usual, a massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch for keeping the channel going. People have told me I need to find a way to reformat this list as it grows, but I find it's much funnier to just keep reducing the font size. Today we are playing Secondhand Lands, an MMO apparently inspired by fairy tales, so strap in because this gets weird. The game client launches and it's just called Client, so we're not off to the best of starts. The first screen we're greeted with after signing up is character selection. I can swing the camera around, but it's focused on this mushroom ring. The graphics are well, they're definitely something. Now to make a character. Did you want to be human? Because you can't. But you can be a sheep. Or a wolf. Or a cat girl. Or a scrapper. Which means biped, but within a sub-race. From bear, to dragon, to wolf, to lizard, to squirrel. This is insane. This is cursed. This is an affront to game design. What the hell is this? Why did you make this? Why did you not sit down and think, I shouldn't make this? Why did nobody stop you? This is what happens when game devs don't limit themselves. We end up with nightmare fuel like this. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'm going to be a squirrel because I don't think I've ever played a squirrel in an MMO. The game starts and... Oh, God. Oh, good God. Why am I floating? Why is there a giant cat statue? Why are the icons at the top so big and yet the text so small? Why is the font so tiny and white? And why is the background of every button a word art texture? Why? I'm looking at this UI and there are so many questions and they are all various versions of why. Oh god, even the movement is wrong. W and S go forward and backward, but A and D don't just turn you, they make you run in a circle constantly. This is how the game comes as default. Holding A or D doesn't just turn you slowly, it doesn't just strafe, it starts an intense circle. So fast, in fact, you can't even use it to turn left and right with any degree of accuracy. And I know I'm going to regret this now, but the dance emote is already on the massive hotbar at the top. It calls to me, so I must click it. Seriously, what the hell is this game? I've been here five minutes and I can already feel parts of my brain melting. Chat to some local NPCs, right click to interact. Jessica Fox is a trader it seems and she sells? Oh of course, PVP juice. Yes, let's take a good old swig of PVP juice. Made from the salty tears of mortal online players. Really refreshing before some PVPing. Right, I'm being followed by a fairy helper. So I chat to them. They've got basic questions I can ask, but at the bottom of the list it says, I find you annoying, go away. Which obviously I click, and this makes you shout, I divorce thee, I divorce thee, I divorce thee. Then the fairy says, that's sad, I was going to tell you where to find unlimited gold and then disappears. Trying to talk to her again before her leaving animation finishes lets me know that NPC cannot be found in this reality. Well, whatever reality she's in now, I hope it's better than this one. Over by the docks, I can see Puss in Boots. Clearly he got fed up with sitting on a treasure chest in DK Online, and he's got a giant chalice symbol above his head, so a quest giver, maybe? He says his aunt needs help, but he doesn't give me any directions as to where to find his aunt, so I'll just run around and press some keys until I find them. I wonder if you can jump. Oh god, why does the jump have a spring sound? effect. This reminds me of Gex Enter the Gecko on PS1, but it shouldn't do because Gex was great and this is terrible. Puss in Boots didn't give me much direction, so I decide to self-navigate and I discover the compass is wrong. Look, you've got the compass overlay in the bottom left and a world map, which is basic, but I mean, everything here is basic, so it fits. But if you line the compass up to say you are going north and then watch the map while moving, you're actually going northeast. 
And if you line the compass up directly south and watch the map, you actually move southwest. The compass and the map aren't even aligned. Secondhand Lands does have swimming, although it takes a second to transition from the standing to swimming animation even when you're in the water. And there's no sound effects, and you can't go underwater, and you move super slowly while you're in the water. And you can't jump while you're in the water either, you need to get to the shoreline. Run into this house, see three kittens talking to Mummy Cat. The kittens all have speech bubbles, and they're talking in a babyish, childish way, which is actually written phonetically like that. You can't interact with the kittens or the mother cat at all. You can, however, obviously, have a chat to the goldfish in the corner, and they tell me they're waiting on a shipment of fish food that Puss in Boots was meant to be delivering, but he crashed the boat because, and I quote the game, he's a bit of a drinker. What? Way to suddenly get dark, game. The first quest is collecting food lost by an alcoholic. Okay, quick note. The tone of this game is all over the place. In parts, it's super adult and dark and depressing, and in others, it's totally over-the-top child-friendly. In others, it's just implosion levels of cringe, and we are going to see them all. You've got a quest journal, but it only shows what you're on, not any available quests. In fact, the only way to find quests is to talk to everyone. There are no quest symbols above anyone's head, and when you're on a quest, the tracker to the top right points you where to go. Okay, here's a technical issue. Holding right click while moving removes the cursor icon and locks the camera behind your avatar so you can steer with the mouse. This is standard across most MMOs. Now, any MMO player will know that holding left click should allow you to move the camera independently of your avatar's facing, but not here. In secondhand lands, holding left click also locks the camera behind the avatar, but doesn't remove the cursor. It does exactly the same thing as holding right click, but it leaves the cursor on the screen. Why? So combat starts. It's tab target, right click to attack. You've got your abilities shown on the hotbar at the top. I currently only have auto attack. So are you ready for combat? Here you go. I died. It's the opening quest and I died, what the hell? I mean, I'm all for difficulty, but dying on the first quest seems a tad harsh. It's not like combat has any skills or tactics to it, there's no dodging or response, it's just a slugging match and I lost. You know what, I'll ask around, see if there are any other quests I can do to level up a bit. Clara needs me to find some catnip. You know she's a girl cat because she's wearing a bow, and what are these textures? It looks like some early 2000s shovelware, Newgrounds level, my first 3D amateur hour design. I wonder what the shake icon does. It's featured on the screen at the top pretty heavily, so it must be important. It uses up stamina, which recharges so quickly it's almost irrelevant, and you just shake off water. Right, I'm calling it now. This game is someone's fetish wish fulfillment. There is no way someone made this for any other reason than bringing some depraved fantasy to life. And hey, if you want to do that, great. Just don't make it a public MMO. Hand in the catnip quest and there's no obvious experience or item reward, but the level bar at the top right has gone up, so clearly I'm doing something right. Ah, this quest needs me to kill some wind-up rats. Combat training, fantastic. Let's get down to business. If you mentally added to defeat the Huns, you now legally have to like the video. While fighting, you cannot see the enemy's level, but you can see their hit points. It's displayed in the extreme top left, and your hit points are shown in the extreme top right, and the fight takes place in the center middle of the screen. They have managed to find the worst possible design choice for this system. They have put the two relevant numerical values in the extreme corners and then the event in the center. They have put all the information you actually need as far apart as physically possible on the screen. Escape brings up the main menu. It looks like this, a series of tiny icons on the right hand side. So tiny when the UI at the top is so big and each item is so unique and random you need to hover over them to see what they do. Now I'm going to assume the icons are arranged in order of importance from top to bottom and the very top icon is log out. The next one is light. Personal light, because clearly everyone carries a small table lamp with them. Your inventory is accessed by clicking the, that's correct, the clipboard icon. The first item we have is a bunny statue. The description lets us know that, and I quote, rubbing it vigorously 
will teleport us to the nearest village. I've got a new player pack, so I'll open that soon. It gives me a cape and a hat, but here's an issue. Hovering your cursor over an item opens the item tooltip, but the tooltip now takes priority. It overlays everything else, meaning if you do hover your cursor over another item that's under the current tooltip window, the current window just remains. You have to wave your cursor away to unload the tooltip before creating a different one. God, this is really basic design stuff. This should have been spotted in alpha, and this game's been out for years. How is this still in it? Shall we put on the cape and the hat we got from the new player pack? Who made this? Why did you make this? You've textured them both the same and they both look terrible. Let's look at the skills menu, see what attacks or skills I can learn with my level up point. Ah, an attack, hammer smash. Let's read the skill description. You give your opponent a bonk bonk on the head. I'm not making that up. That's what it says. And it's an ability, so I buy it, and I test it, and yep, it does indeed give the opponent a bonk bonk. I even level it up, so I can bonk bonk better. The player stats menu is almost a cruel joke, because there's so, so many. You have so many skills and so many proficiencies. Okay, look, we need to talk about game design for a second. We've all got a friend who's designing a game and they want to make it super complex and track everything and have intermixing skills and stats and stuff, and they think more stats means better game. This is the game they will end up making. No one is going to care about your smelter salvaging and smelter efficiency, which are two different stats in this game, if the majority of your gameplay Play is a complete joke. It doesn't matter that you've got a thousand skills if the actual moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is crap. Oh, there's also a token shop, a real money cash shop, but with no prices. It just says 100 tokens. So I try and buy some and it doesn't even work. I click again and it says I'm in the middle of a purchase. I can't buy until I finish my purchase, but there's nothing. I even check Steam. There is no way to buy anything in this game. When the cash shop doesn't work, you know a game is bad. The radar option just overlays some icons of NPCs and enemies in the center of the screen, but with no labels of who or what they are. I wonder if the power of the hat and the cape will allow me to kill the bunnies from earlier. Let's go and find out. Well, the power of the bonk bonk does help me kill one of them, but I get attacked by a second before I can heal and I die again. Right, let's just leave the starting village and explore the island because the land mass is actually quite big. Outside there are some rats chasing cats, which is a nice subversion of expectations. Oh, and there's a first person mode. Well, now it's basically Morrowind. There's a duck. Why does the duck have a mitten? on its head as a hat. Everything about this game screams lol random mid 2000s internet humour. I'm half expecting Kate Eater Penguin of Doom to hold up a spork any second or for some Homestuck fans to start glomping me. But sometimes you've got moments of surreal insane genius like the houses in this village all being fantasy things like a giant baked pie or an upturned bucket or a giant elvish shoe. The whole game design is equal parts captivating graphical insanity and crippling systemic incompetence. Like why is there a stage in the middle of the village with a DJ booth on it? Who is this for? What is the target demographic for this game? Oh good crafting, let's learn a system. Take this tin, take this copper, and then smelt them together to form a bronze bar. Right, you know, just because you played RuneScape doesn't mean you're qualified to make a game. And look, look at the text. Bronze is an alloy. Can you say alloy? You're talking to me like it's an episode of Dora the Explorer, yet earlier you were discussing Puss in Boots as crippling alcoholism. What tone are you going for, game? Are you dark and depressing or child-friendly and whimsical? Another system, enchanting. We are given a new hat and four enchant gems. We use the ripper and put the gems in. All the system interfaces are bad. There's no flowchart or understanding to any of them. There's no numbers shown. Sometimes you pick an option via drop-down menu. Other times you do it by clicking an icon and choosing from a grid. This whole system needs to be reworked. Oh, and the machine that you use to enchant stuff is this. This sci-fi looking monstrosity with wires and tubes hooked up to a golden woman. And the new hat that I've just made is exactly the same texture as the old hat. But this, this angers me a lot. We now talk to the repairman. His name is Great Wiener and his text box says in asterisks, makes a pose. 
graphics game, you have graphics. You don't need to describe what the characters do. You can animate it. The reason people describe stuff in books or forum posts is because you can't see them. You are a visual medium. You could have just animated an actual pose. In the corner of the village, there's even a player-owned housing section accessed through a portal. But the portal doesn't work, and the house seller is a duck. And he tells me the housing isn't in the game yet, but will be added soon because, and I quote the game, the investors are impatient. Look, if you invested in this game, you have bigger problems than when will housing come out. I journey inside the giant boot and I run up the inside ledge and I meet a cat girl called Nom Nom. She is collecting chewing gum and if I find any I should bring it to her. I decide to test if there is fall damage and see if I can kill myself. Unfortunately, I can't. Pick up a quest from this crow to go and find his eggs. Apparently they've been stolen by pigs. Then I follow this giant neon Cure Go sign and find Dr. Cat Girl. I ask if she's a real doctor and in the convo it says no, she's a mechanic. But because of the lack of cars, she's started treating patients. This game's plot is surreal. But this next bit, my god, this next bit gets dark because of the environmental storytelling. We know she's a doctor and is treating pets. It said so in her text box. And we have a very 70s style waiting room with a smooth edge triangular table. Let's walk into this hospital, shall we? And just see what kind of tone the game goes for now. What the hell? And not a jokey funny what the hell, but actually quite a serious concerned what the hell. There is a blood and feces stained mattress on a mechanical raising ramp, gas bottles to the side and a bandsaw on the wall and everywhere is stained with dried blood. I know this isn't a photorealistic scene of gore, but think about what this is meant to imply. The game has to be a parody. This has to be satire or some form of statement making modern art. This has to be a dark adult regressive fantasy. This isn't suitable for kids. This situation is wrong. Let's go back to the whimsy. Remember the giant bucket house? Well, there's two tiny kids inside called Jack and Jill. And at the top of the ramp, find around the edge of the bucket, there's a wolf called Jack Flash. Another quest, a goose this time who needs a golden egg found. Okay, you know what? Let's try and actually do some quests. Holding shift makes you walk. It removes all the icons along the top edge, but it doesn't remove the edging of the UI itself. Why would you ever need to do this? Whenever you move from zone to zone, you get told in a text pop-up above your head where you are. But look, this is just taking the piss now. Now entering poorly animated forest. Self-referential humor doesn't make your bad game any better. I do actually really like the touch of the grass being made of money and the enemies being piggy banks though. That's actually quite nice. Oh no way, there's a day and night cycle and we are in the perfect place to watch the moon rise. Why do games put in day and night cycles before they've mastered the basics like movement? Then, after a long journey in the distance, we find the buffalo. And good god, the animation. The buffalo are technically animated, but just watch. They have taken the entire static model and just moved it around like a kid playing with a plastic toy. They rear up by just tilting back. And because of this, we're able to capture this magical moment on film forever. Nature truly is wonderful. Run into this tree, get attacked by a buffalo when entering, and then discover the enemy attacks will overcome all obstacles, including distance from you. So even if it's on the floor and I'm at the top of the tree, it can still hit me. And despite finding the golden goose egg, I die before I can pick it up. This game is bad. It's really, really bad. And while checking the world map, I see a tiny island in the middle of the ocean to the northeast, miles from anywhere, and I decide I'm going to swim there. Why? Because part of this series is documenting the undocumented, exploring the unexplored, and how many people in history do you think have ever even seen that island? I don't think very many, so let's go exploring. 
To get back to the nearest village, I interact with my bunny item, but I move during the interaction and the bar says, your rubbing was interrupted. Well, damn game, thanks for reminding me of my teenage years. While in the water, you can position your camera under your avatar. There is no water effect or sound. It just removes the water and makes you look like you're floating. It's oddly relaxing at nighttime, almost ethereal. The journey takes a long time because I need to avoid all the enemies or I'll likely die to any one of them. I discover the giant pumpkin patch of the southern shore. Then I find this mind control crystal with some mind controlled sheep by it, one of which says, now I look thinner and I don't even need to vomit up cud. Whoever wrote this game needs to either market it as a dark adult parody or seek help. Pass through Bo Peep's village, known of course for the giant pepper trees. Keep a distance from the wily monkeys on the other side of the lake and then continue through the mushroom forest. The music so far has been very late 90s Christmas film. You know the kind, big family, big house, affluent neighborhood, American comedy style film. Just listen and you'll see what I mean. Finally, I make it to the shore and begin the long, long swim to the distant island. This game raises so many questions and I think the answer to all of them is drugs. So while we're making this long swim across, let's read some reviews. Funny, I don't remember dropping acid tonight. It's worse than it looks and it looks like regurgitated spinach soup. Real wolves can't be concerned with the comments of the opinionated sheep. Great party game for challengers. My friends and I see how long we can go before vomiting. The last one wins a cash prize. I have to go wash my keyboard now. I recommend that you keep Task Manager open in case you need to suddenly end the game to save your mental health. I'd also like to mention if you watch the trailer for this game on Steam, it's made using Windows Movie Maker because they are still using the default blue background and yellow font. Eventually, after a good 30 minutes of non-stop swimming, the island looms into view and there is a single windmill on it. And as we get closer, we spot a single NPC. The NPC is a cat girl called Aquaelle and she says she is collecting water. If I see any, bring it to her. You live on an island in the middle of the ocean. You have all of the water in the game surrounding you. I climb the windmill. You can't go to the very top, but there is a ledge halfway up and I gaze across the ocean for a while. They've not sorted the camera interaction with solid objects and the fence posts are awkward to navigate the viewpoint around. I don't want to play anymore because I can feel myself slowly going insane, but I do want to document a few more locations just out of curiosity. I vigorously rub the bunny and return to the nearest village and then go and explore the local beehive. As expected, it's massive because weird games like this have a strange obsession with making things as big as they can possibly be. It's like someone found the scale tool and just went mad. Inside it's actually quite maze-like, but eventually I do find the queen. Right-clicking her does nothing. No interaction, no reply, just makes her do a little animation. Ah, of course, bees communicate by dance. Let's try that. No, strangely, it didn't work. Let's explore more. Outside the hive, I get attacked by a bee and die, respawning in the bear village. And what the hell? Again, there is a stage with dancing bears and ducks, and the village is being attacked by giant dandelions. I jump on the stage and get one hit killed by a dandelion, so I respawn and try again, and why do the dandelions have a firing cannon as an attack sound effect? Why is this house police taped off? Why is there a detective bear? And why does the police tape say MKPD? What does MK stand for? We're in secondhand land. The two factions are Little Red Riding Hood and Bo Peep. This is the bear village. Where do the letters MK come from? I'm able to sneak into this house by luring some dandelions away by repeatedly dying. And once in the house, I find nothing. This is clearly the whole Goldilocks fairy tale. Three bowls of porridge, three beds, there are three bears outside, but there's nothing else here apart from some strangely realistic paintings in the house that clash heavily with the graphical style of the rest of the game. Outside, I ask the bear, Harry, why they're being attacked by dandelions, and he explains the bears have formed an alliance with the local honeybees and the dandelions took offense to this. I mean, of course, now you say it, it all seems so obvious. Inside this hut, there are bags of fertilizer. 
Pepe's fertilizer. Okay, this game is a joke. A giant, surreal, strange, insane joke. I googled it, and I mean, Pepe's is a real brand, but from what I can find, they don't sell fertilizer. But the game has one final parting bit of insanity. When you log out, this is the screen you see. A far too human fox, a skunk hugging its own tail, a sheep with a bit too much shading on the hooves, a wolf waving seductively, a My Chemical Romance fan brooding at me, and her 1950s Stepford Wives housewife mother staring me down with a dead inside smile. All of this overlaid with sultry jazz. This image, this music, is what the game wants your final memory of it to be. I say again, and for the final time, what the hell. Secondhand Lands is a fever dream of a game. You play as a terribly animated animal and journey around a surreal landscape and adventure through fairy tale inspired locations. But the game isn't strange in the good way. It's strange in the I'm making my first game and have just discovered the scale option and the texture option. The UI is both too big and too small at the same time. The text is barely readable in places. The movement is awkward, especially turning left and right, and the jumping sound effects get very annoying very quickly. There is a quest system, but you'll have to fight to figure it out, along with the crafting and enchanting system. Enemies are either lol random levels of zany, or animated by just moving the whole static mesh. The game is bad. It has a certain level of insanity, which can be entertaining to explore for 30 minutes, but there is no way anyone is playing this as their main game. It should not be advertised to children in any way. It is a dark adult parody of the fantasy genre and contains some extremely disturbing images when you stop and consider their implications. Because that hospital, I cannot get the image of that blood and feces stained mattress out of my mind. It is genuinely concerning and it's what's going to stick with me. The tone of the game is all over the place and I very much hope I can forget it, but I know it will always be there in the back of my mind taunting me. So to end the review, I will award Secondhand Land's blood soaked mattress in a pet hospital out of 10. Thanks for watching. Another massive thank you to all the supporters on Patreon and Twitch who keep the channel going. You can support from only £1 a month. Check the video description for links to the Patreon, Twitch, Twitter and our Discord channel. And as always, have a great day.